Hi, everyone. My name is Anshul Saraf, and I'm a third year in American Studies and WGSS. This summer, I did a combination of ethnographic and archival work in order to consider the history of indigenous anti-nuclear organizing in the Pacific through an organization known as a Nuclear Free and Independent Pacific Movement. So the poster that is on this poster right here, as well as the two photographs above, are both um, historical photos from NFIP mobilization. I also considered the material traces left on Pacific Islanders subject to nuclear detonations, whose landscapes and displacement point to the still present nature of 20th century wars in the Pacific. The aerial photo of Majuro Atoll in the Marshall Islands depicts the ethnographic space in which I began to ask the latter question more intently. And I took that photo from the plane window. Um, for my research, I visited the National Archives of Australia in Canberra and the National Archives of Aotearoa, or New Zealand, in Wellington, as well as the archives at UH Manoa in Honolulu, Hawaii. I also did preliminary fieldwork in Majuro in the Marshall Islands. I have a few primary takeaways from this experience. First, the politics of the archive are deeply enmeshed with empire's entanglements within climate change, as many documents formerly available in the marshals were lost due to disaster events or moved to imperial archives due to sea level rise. Second, the Black Pacific is a generative terrain of contestation within 20th century social movements in Oceania, especially in the ways it troubles divides between blackness and indigeneity in order to provide a fulcrum for solidarity. And that's me, I think, riffing on Manu Karuka's um, uh, ideas of fulcrums for solidarity. Third, war is immediate in the marshals. It happened, it is happening, it could happen at any given moment. These coexisting temporalities remind me that as I imagine liberatory Pacific Islander futures, I must also account for the colonial and settler, settler futures already set in motion by the artifacts of war, such as unexploded ordinances, human bones in various stages of repatriation or loss, and American military ships rusting in the fishing lagoon, parts breaking off and breaching sand where children play. Finally, Pacific Islander women and queer people are and have been at the helm of these trans-indigenous movements. The sovereignty of their bodies is a critical foundation to further liberation. While these are just a handful of the revelations I had doing research this summer, they speak to a much larger examination of nuclear colonialism and indigenous resistance, as well as the transformations of race that emerge from the migration catalyzed by these unfolding processes. I thank Rhythm for funding this work. It has proven to be an extraordinarily enriching summer. Thank you. Thank you.